Greetings everybody, Ryan Charles from Nitty Gritty Studios here with another quick tutorial on Final Cut Pro 10, or as I like to call it sometimes, X. Today we're going to take a look at 10 everyday editing features in FCPX that have been there all along, but that in my opinion sort of help set Final Cut aside from the rest of the NLEs in the pack. Film strips. This might be one of my favorite features in Final Cut and it all has to do with how they display the footage that's in your bins, your folders, or as they call them in Final Cut Pro, events. Now, if you go over here, you see that we have the clips in this certain browser displayed in list form, per usual, and you can also toggle up over here to see them in thumbnail view. Uh, now, what's great about Final Cut Pro is that if you head up over here to the Clip Appearance drop-down menu, you can extend the time of the thumbnails per each clip, essentially turning them into film strips. And this is a great way to scroll through an entire clip. Let's say you've shot a long thing of B-roll and you're trying to find the perfect shot in there. You can literally find it visually by scrolling down along through the film strip. Um, now Final Cut Pro is designed where you make your selections here on the film strip in the browser by setting your in and out points, by setting different various keywords, uh, and then editing them directly from there, as opposed to what most people are used to in other NLEs, creating string out sequences of selections of various kinds, loading them into some sort of a viewer here, and editing them into the timeline from that. Um, there is a roundabout way you can essentially do that in Final Cut Pro 10, but you would never actually want to because of the way that the media management is set up. It's already more intuitive and better for organization in my opinion anyway. Think of skimming as having essentially a second playhead. With skimming turned on, which you can do up over here on these icons or by hitting S to toggle them on and off, essentially you can leave the playhead where it is in the timeline and you can hop up into the browser and skim along different clips of footage to find a little piece that you might want to edit in. If you go up here to view, you'll see that there are actually three different types of skimming. Skimming in total is the video skimming. If you want to add audio skimming, you'll see that when you skim along, you get the audio when you skim along. If you turn the audio skimming off, either by there or selecting it separately down over here, you'll see that when you skim along, you do not get the audio. Now what clip skimming is for is to be able to display the time code for the clip that you are hovered over in in the timeline rather than the sequence time code. Now if you turn the clip skimming back off you'll see that it maintains the sequence time code regardless. Now the last thing I'll say about skimming is if you go up over here to view browser click on skimmer info right there. What this does is now when you're in the browser section here if you skim over different clips the keywords and time code from that clip will pop up. You see I labeled this one right here as B-roll. So that's a really great way to see the keywords of your clips while you're still in thumbnail view. The range tool. This is a real simple one. Essentially, go over down here to your toolbar. You can select range there, or you can just hit R for the shortcut. And when you want to lower a certain section of audio, let's say we were going to have some dialogue occur right down here underneath this spot, you simply lasso the audio that you want to lower and drag it down. It essentially creates four distinct keyframes with two clicks of a button. Pretty easy. Something Final Cut does that I also love in their organizational aspects is organizing separate audio channels into what they have dubbed as a component. That can easily be expanded to edit individual channels and collapse for organizational purposes to neaten it up a little bit when you're editing. In other NLEs, assistant editors will utilize various workflows so that picture editor only has to deal with two tracks of an audio mix down during editing, but can easily bring in the ISOs later. Um, in Avid, there's a method which you double match frame back to an original sync sequence with all these audio tracks in it, blah, 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 blah. In Final Cut Pro, this is handled for you, essentially. You simply right click on a clip that has multiple audio channels and you click expand audio components. As you'll see now, we have all of these separate audio channels have spread out. You'll see two of the channels are actually empty. So why don't we go ahead and delete those. And now let's say this one down over here had some noise on this little section. Let's grab our range tool, which we just learned to use. 
range that, lower that right there. And now you see we've done editing to the audio channels inside of this clip, but now we can simply go here, collapse audio components, and it's neatened up back inside where you don't have to worry about it. Now, for anyone dealing with documentaries, having access to an image pan and zoom preset a la Ken Burns is a great little feature to help add initial temp animation to photos without having to make so much time on it. So I'm going to go up over here and just get rid of the event viewer so we have a little more space for our image. And uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure it's selected. Head up over here to the bottom left, click on Crop. And as you'll see, you have a trim, a crop, and a Ken Burns option here at the end. Click on Ken Burns. And it's as simple as putting the green box around where you want to start the image on. Let's say we want to start where it says New York Times right there. And we want to end on this spot right over here where it says President takes quiet role in determining. And then as you see, when we go back to the beginning, and click play, it automatically does the zoom and pan for us. Uh, now that is just a real quick, easy way to do temps to start with, so you don't have to waste all this time, which you're going to end up changing a lot of those things later anyway. Don't you wish that instead of having to apply an effect onto a video or an audio uh, clip in order to see or sound what it looks like, you could just preview it by hovering it over? Um, well, that's exactly what we have in Final Cut. So we've got this little driving clip here. Let's see what this would look like with the, um, we'll go over to our looks here, and 50s TV. All you do is come over here, and you can literally, again, skim back left and right on it and preview all these different looks on the clip that is selected in your timeline. And what's even cooler is if you hold down the Option key and you scan left to right, it shows you the various percentages of that effect applied to the clip. The next four little tricks are sweet and quick and are all great examples of Final Cut's ability to give you these tiny little gems of editing tools. Final Cut's hold feature allows you to let an audio effect continue to ring even if you've run out of media. So for instance, we have this little music clip that just abruptly ends. Well, let's say we wanted that to echo out. So if we come over here, drop that on there, Open up our inspector here up on the top right and just make sure that the echo is turned up. So now if we hit play again, you see the echoes apply, but it still ends where the clip ends. So if we keep the clip selected, go up over here to the retiming tool and select hold. And that creates this little hold section here on the retiming menu applied to the clip. And literally all you do is drag this and you drag it to the right here and you'll see that now when you hit play you get the delay that you're looking for. Now for anyone working in interviews the flow dissolve is a quick and easy way to avoid having to find yet another shot of b-roll in order to edit out all the uhs and ums and dead space in a subject's interview. Um, as you see here, a little shot of me actually, um, we will be you see we had two pretty uh, noticeable jumps. The second one was extremely more noticeable. Campaign. We will be setting out to raise. Now, uh, and no, my name is not Stephen Smith. That's just for an example. Um, but first, let's take care of these dissolves. Um, so we head over here into our transition button, little menu. Um, and let's just go ahead and search for flow. And there's our flow dissolve. So if you apply that onto this, you'll see here says analyzing for optical flow. Wait for that to be done. And now when you hit play, we will be set. boom, almost seamless. Same thing over here. Drop that on. Wait for the analyzing for optical flow to go away. And now, that one was a little harder because my mouth was open. But let's watch it again. You'll see it actually does a pretty good job of it. Campaign. We will be setting out to raise. Now, normally, I would it looks a little weird because we know that we're looking for it, but if you were in a bind, you could get away with it. This next one is simple but satisfying. Let's say that they're missing a shot in your edit. Go up to Edit, Insert Generator, Placeholder, or you can use the shortcut. And it creates this little placeholder clip that you go up over here into the parameters in the inspector. You can tell it what kind of shot you want it to be. You can say how many people you want to be in the shot. Is it men? Is it women? Is it just a mix? 
what's the background a little bit of a beach instead these don't really change very much to be honest sunny day cloudy day etc interior and you can even put some notes here so that's good if you're missing some b-roll shots and you want to tell your director what they need for a certain spot Finally, let's say you've gone through and done all the lower thirds in your documentary, only to find out that you were given the wrong spelling for one of the guy's names. It's not Stephen with a V, it's Stephen with a PH. But now you have all these lower thirds here that you want to have to go through and change one by one, because double-clicking this, changing one, doesn't change the others. It's, there's not one source lower third here that these are being uh, derived from. So uh, it actually makes it pretty easy. All you have to do is go up in here to Edit, go to Find and Replace Title Text, you type in the word that you want to be replaced. Then you type in the word that you want to replace it with. And you simply click Replace All. And as you see, it has already changed all of the Stevens with a V to Stevens with PHs. Pretty easy if you ask me. Um, well, there you have it, folks. Ten awesome little features that help make FCPX one of the most enjoyable NLEs to cut your footage in. Until next time, this is Ryan Charles from Nitty Gritty Studios.